It's, of course, a great pleasure to be here to open this conference since, in a sense, the modern era in nanoscience and technology started not so far from here in Switzerland with Binnig and Rohrer. Since the STM, the scanning probe microscope systems, were the ones that really opened this field. And what I'd like to do is to sketch for you a completely prejudiced view of where the field is right now, just to give a kind of perspective for the talks that follow the deal both with science and technology and also, I gather, in a bit with money, both interesting subjects. So let me start by giving you a little bit of an introduction. The subject that we're going to be talking about, of course, is nano, and very broadly, nanoscience, nanotechnology, both are interesting. Typically, in this field, science is preceding technology. It doesn't always happen that way. And there's at least one important area in which technology is far ahead of science. But what I'd like to do is to sketch for you briefly what it is that is what it has become as a field. And then to talk about why it's interesting, because it has, of course, attracted a great deal of attention. And then finally, to address the question which is still unresolved, which is that at the end, is this going to turn out to be a very important field or a field? And that's still an open issue. And the way that I think about this is a little bit like this. That's the Santa Maria. And if you remember, the Santa Maria was one of the ships that Columbus set off for the New World with. And it's good to go back and think a little bit about why Columbus did this. Because we remember Columbus is inventing the New World, and that's terrific. But Columbus didn't do this because he really thought it was fun to go off and see if there was an end of the earth or whether there really were dragons that lived in the ocean. He actually hoped to make a lot of money out of it. And so it was a mixture of probably too much testosterone and great interest in coming back with, with lots of, of prizes and I think probably a sense of adventure. And all of those, those elements are present in the field of nanotechnology. So it's at the beginning, I say adolescence, the field has now been around for 25 years. So it's appropriate to begin to ask how it's going and the answer is it's going pretty well. But let's talk about some of the details. First, just for those of you who are not necessarily in this field, how do you think about scales of sizes? And there are any number of ways of doing this, but here is one of my favorite mountains, which is Denali in Alaska. And it's an interesting mountain because there's a clear differentiation between the top and the, the plateau on which it sits, and that's 6,000 meters. And here's an ant, and you can look at both of those. Take a baby's finger, a molecule, it's the same ratio, and that's about a nanometer. So it gives you a sense for scale. Now, why is that area interesting? And the reason is that it falls, nano falls in between two scales that we understand very well. One is chemistry. Chemistry makes molecules, and molecules are a nanometer, a couple of nanometers in size. And that's a field which has been around for a while and works extremely well. And I found that when talking to particularly physicists who are very proud of their work in nanotechnology, it's very useful to point out to them that chemists have been doing nanotechnology for 200 years and take it more or less for granted. Then the top part of it is the top-down work, which has been developed in greatest detail by the people who do microelectronics with exquisite skill. And I'm going to return to this in a bit. But that is a field in which systems of very great complexity have developed whose feature sizes have gone from originally about 10 microns down to numbers that are now in the order of 40 nanometers. So this area, top down for microelectronics, including areas like viruses and colloids, is making its way down. Chemistry is making its way up. And the interest in nanoscience and technology is that it's the field that's in between. And so the question is, why is that interesting? And in what, what parts of science does that offer opportunities for science or for technology? 
So there are several ways of thinking about these subjects. And I would say first that I personally am very much of the opinion that we should group nano and micro and small generally in the same category. Making a distinction between nano and micro is probably not a very useful thing to do. Why? And the reason is that small is not always, smaller is not always better. Uh, if you're working with cells, for example, in mammalian cell-based assays, a cell spread out is about a 50 micron object. And you really can't make it smaller than that. So there's an intrinsic size to that. For electronics, I don't know that we're ever going to make 10 nanometer electronics because the physics begins to be complicated at that scale. So you want to have systems in which you match the application to the size scale of the thing. And the spectrum of scales from one nanometer to 100 microns, that overall is what is the tendency in, in technology which is driving much of what goes on now in, in science and technology. That is to make things small, low power, portable, and so on. 